Hi and welcome to a new video from Goodbye Matrix. I am currently traveling in Thailand and in this video I would like to talk to you about this beautiful country, whether it is suitable as a plan B residence and perhaps as a longer term residence to emigrate to. I have been traveling in Thailand for a few weeks now and would like to summarize for you what I have experienced, how I currently see the country, what options there are here to emigrate in the long term, the pros and cons of these options, and of course whether it is suitable this country for the system exit. I last visited Thailand before Corona and have now returned in 2023. I have currently been here for two months, will now travel on to Laos and then come back to see more of Thailand before heading back to Europe. First of all, I would like to take a look at the advantages and disadvantages that Thailand ultimately offers you and what advantages I ultimately see here. So one of the biggest advantages for location independent entrepreneurs and of course pensioners is that you can live here very, very tax optimized. That is to say, I will come back to the tax system in a moment. It is possible to live here completely tax free which is a very, very big advantage of Thailand. What I noticed again is the topic of service. So that means here in Thailand you have extremely high service quality. To give you a few examples, if you go to the gas station in Germany, there is hardly anyone who will help you fill up your car. Here in Thailand it is completely normal. You come with your car to the gas station and it is filled up. I have experienced the same in South Africa, for example. Service is also relatively good there. But here in Thailand, it is even one level higher, in my opinion. Every second day, a cleaning lady comes by my house. She cleans everything for me, which means I don't have to worry about all this stuff. I have a pool boy who takes care of the pool. I can use a delivery service, so if I don't want to cook at home myself, I can have something delivered via Food Panda. That's not a problem at all. If I don't feel like cooking or my wife doesn't feel like cooking, then I can, yes, just go to the soup kitchens here or to the various small Thai restaurants. Also, for I say a pleasant price, a full plate. As an example, if you want it to be really cheap, you can get a meal here for 40 baht, which is about one euro. Then you get a plate with rice and whatever you want on it. For example, a curry or something, or 80 baht, 120 baht, for that you get a meal. Between one and I say five euros with a drink, you will be full. If you go to a higher quality restaurant, of course, you pay more logically, but that's just been an example. I paid that in 2023, so that's all no problem at all. And what's also a big advantage, in my opinion, of Thailand is the issue of security. I mean, you want to live in a country where you feel safe, where you're not afraid to walk the streets at night, and that's no problem at all here in Thailand. It's super safe, the people are super friendly, and it's also very culturally very pleasant here. It has very, very much culture, the country. It's fun, so you can experience a lot. It's safe, and the people are friendly, and then, on the other hand, it's like the weather is, of course, very pleasant and relatively warm. What disadvantages do I see in Thailand? Actually, there are relatively few disadvantages. To pick up on the weather again, it is, of course, a disadvantage when it is very hot. Not everyone likes that. We are in the tropics here, you have high humidity. So that's one thing, you have to cope with that, especially if you want to work independent of location, that's one thing. Then you have to make friends with the weather, and if you really want to do something on the laptop and so on and so forth, if you really want to do some work on a laptop and so on, then you should go to air-conditioned rooms, because otherwise outside, like here right now, I'm making a video, you can stand it for 10 or 20 minutes. But then here, actively working outside all day, you have to be hardened or like it. So that's one thing. If you don't get along with the climate, you have to look for another country, of course, where the climate suits you in the end. Then, of course, as a foreigner here, you have relatively few rights. You could say, if you live here long term, so to give you an example, you can't legally buy land here now as property. You can own a house, you can own a condo, but the land itself, what it's built on, is not. There are solutions, of course. You can have a long-term lease, for example, 30 years, renew for another 30 years. 
There are also various constructions. We have all kinds of contacts for that if you need help in that area. But of course, it's one of those things. If you're looking for a land where you can buy a piece of land, where you can build your own house, where you have, let's say, the same rights as the nationals, then Thailand is probably not the country for you right now. But the nice thing is, compared to other countries here, the housing market is relatively easy. That means you just come here, you look for something, and you can rent relatively easy, also long term, at comfortable prices. So that means you don't necessarily have to own something here in property in Thailand. That's also an advantage, again, in my opinion. It looks quite different in other countries. When I think back to Costa Rica, for example, it was much more difficult to find a long-term place to stay, even an affordable place, I would say, that is not extremely overpriced. Meanwhile, here in Thailand, you can book yourself for a week first in Airbnb or in some hotel. You drive around with your scooter, look at different resorts and so on, or in apartment buildings, look at that and then you can rent relatively easy long term, also what at a good price. So that's, I guess, pros and cons. And all the stuff like, yeah, you can't vote here. I mean, we want to get out of the system anyway, so why do I want to have the right there, so to speak, to vote for anything? So I don't really see that as a disadvantage in the end. Then another disadvantage is that it is more difficult to stay here in the long term so it is not so easy to get a visa here. That's also the next topic I want to talk to you about. How can you actually live here long term? Two interesting options. The first option is if you are over 50 years old. You can classify yourself as a pensioner here. You have to deposit 800,000 Thai baht into your account at a bank here in Thailand two months before you start the process and then you can apply for the pensioner visa. You get the pensioner visa for one year. Three months before you extend it to another year, you must have before, in any case, again, the 800,000 Thai baht on the account. That is about 20, a little more than 20,000 euros currently. So really a sum that is doable for many, I think. That's not extremely high now. Then there are other options. You can also prove a pension of 65,000 Thai baht per month. But I think for most people, it's easier to just deposit that 800,000 Thai baht in the account here. With that, you can then stay here relatively easily for a year always. There's even the possibility to apply for the OX visa. That's possible for Canadians, for US Americans, for people from Great Britain, Germans, Swiss. They can, if they deposit 3 million Thai baht into an account here, they can even get this pensioner visa for 10 years, so not so bad, this option, to be honest. But if you are not 50 years old now, like me, but you still want to live in Thailand for a long time, you can, of course, start out as a tourist, theoretically. But that's not a long-term option. If you want to stay long-term and you are still under 50 years old, is very common if you are an investor or a location-independent entrepreneur with relatively good assets and income, the Thai elite visa is usually the best option. That's where you pay 600,000 Thai baht at the beginning for the first five years. And then you have the option to extend it for another 15 years after the five years have expired for a total of 20 years. And then the extension costs another 400,000 Thai baht, so a total of 1 million Thai baht, and then you can stay here for 20 years. That is, you pay for the residence permit. Now, many people say, yes, but 1 million Thai baht, I'll never get that money back. But in return, you can stay here for 20 years, relatively without any problems. The authorities, I would say, don't get on your nerves here like they do in other countries. And it's also, as I said, extremely tax optimized if you have the right income, if you structure it correctly. And I think it's actually a zero sum game over 20 years because you have a relatively low cost of living here. You have so many enormous advantages here. You can save so much time as an entrepreneur through all this service quality that you have planned here. If you don't have to pay taxes, it's actually a no brainer, to be honest. You can always look at it from two angles. I just look at it from the point of view of the investment and what advantages it ultimately brings me. And if I wanted to live here in the long term, then I would probably buy this Thai elite visa when I have the income and the assets for it. That's actually not such a bad option in the end. Otherwise, I don't want to go into it any further. You can do your own research. There is, of course, the possibility to apply for a business visa here. You can also marry a Thai or a Thai. You can also have a Thai child here. To get a residence permit, there is the education visa, which is currently having a crackdown. Let's see when that comes back. 
And then, of course, there is a digital nomad visa, but that is very, very difficult from the conditions. Most will not qualify in this area. Yes, let's take a quick look at the points of taxes and system exit at the end. As I said at the beginning, Thailand is very, very exciting from a tax point of view. That is, you have a kind of territorial taxation here. Everything you earn abroad and don't bring into Thailand in the same tax year is legally tax-free here. So it's very, very exciting for all location-based entrepreneurs, for all investors. There's no capital gains tax, crypto investors, and so on and so forth. So that's really super exciting. That means you can legally live here tax-free, purely theoretically long-term in Thailand. At least currently, let's see if that changes in the future. Currently, it's just possible if you are a little bit afraid of the Great Reset or potential blackouts and all these issues. We have written a very, very detailed analysis and created a statistic on the topic of security of supply. That is, which countries have the highest security of supply? And Thailand has ranked 62nd here in our statistic out of 106 analyzed countries, so midfield a little bit worse, is now from the supply security, not the best country, but there is a neighboring country which is very, very strong, stood out. Even came in the top five, so if you're interested, you can find the link also under the video about the security of supply. Another advantage here is that you can very, very easily open a bank account. Even as a tourist, you can very, very easily open an account at Bangkok Bank and have the possibility to expand your international portfolio of bank accounts. You just have to do it on the spot. And we have in our internal area, there also a detailed guide to how you can ultimately open an account in Thailand at Bangkok Bank, because we have done that. You can also get a driver's license here relatively easily. You can have it transferred. We have also made a very, very detailed instruction in the internal area on how that works, because we have also done that. And so you would then also have another driver's license that you can get here. Another driver's license, which brings you here on the spot, of course, also other advantages. Some penalties are partly lower with a Thai driver's license. And if the police stops you, they can't tell you that you drove without a license, which they like to do with foreigners because they don't recognize foreign driver's licenses. If you don't have a special international one, Yes, that's right. That was the video about Thailand. I hope you liked it. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, all the best. Ciao.